dream of genie with the light brown hair Born like a vapor on the summer air I see her tripping where the bright streams play Happy as the daisies that danced on her way Hi boys and girls Today I'm going to show you how to write a letter. I'm Rajiv Surendra, and I am a calligrapher here in New York City. And I am honored to be pairing with the Morgan to inspire you to shut your phones off, to get out some paper, and to write a little message to somebody you care about, and then to fold it up, and then put it in an envelope, and then to put a stamp on it, and then to find a mailbox, and then to put it inside, and then they'll get it, and they'll read it, and they'll be so happy, and many, many years from now, that little piece of paper might be sitting somewhere, and somebody else might come across it, and someone might be very moved by what you wrote down on that page. Is that gonna happen with an email? Or a text message? Maybe. Probably not. So, I need some coffee first. Or do I? I probably don't. Okay. Ooh. Standards are slipping. Uh, now, if you've never written a letter before, I highly encourage you to do it. If you have written a letter and you know what you're doing, you can turn this video off or you can keep watching for some further inspiration. Um, but I want to tell you about the sort of standard method of writing a letter. If you're new to this or if you need a refresher and um, hopefully when you're done this video, you'll, do, you'll write a letter yourself. So, because I'm a calligrapher and I'm in this business, whenever I'm at a stationery store or even a bookstore, I go to the section where there's pads of paper and pens and I peruse. And if something intrigues me, then um, I pick it up and I, I, have a, uh, I have a heavy Rubbermaid box full of all of my stationery. Now, this stuff doesn't have to be fancy when I encourage people to buy paper that inspires them to write, it doesn't mean that it has to be the finest French laid paper um, from a mill that goes back to the 1600s. We have that in here though. Uh, it can be stuff like this. This is a kid's notebook that I bought in Ireland when I was visiting Gigi. Look. There's some Gaelic on there. Dunandaris. Uh, yeah, so it can be something like this. It can be one of those yellow Lego pads. That bright yellow with the pink stripe on the side and, ye and blue lines. I like writing on that too. Um, you know, certain people require certain stationery. So when I'm writing to one friend, I might not necessarily use the same paper that I'd be using for another friend. I also in here have some neat things that I've picked up from my searching. Here, let me show you this because this is really wonderful. This is a mailable notebook made by Moleskin. Look at this thing. like a little take off the sleeve take it off so you write the address on here and look it's a little like notebook 
it has one, two, four pages. So you write your letter. I actually do little watercolors in here. So I'll start writing, and then if I'm describing something, I'll do a little picture, an illustration, a la Beatrix Potter. And then you fold it up like this, and there's it's gummed, so it seals like this, and the edges are perforated. So when the person receives this, there's a little sticker on here that instructs them to tear along three edges and the bound edge remains intact and they open it up like a book. So that's the very, very long way around telling you that these things will encourage you, or they encourage me at least, to write letters. And this is a little stationary treasure box that I have. It's always added to because it's often depleted. Uh, I write a lot of letters. Let's put this away. So, get out your paper, get out your favorite pen, and uh, some nice envelopes, and, and then we're going to start writing. Now, when you start your letter, there is a format of generally, where you should put the date and the location. Um, I mentioned this in the last video, but start with your dear so-and-so or hey, or just their name, however you want to start. Write the body of the letter. And when you reach the bottom of a page, or when you're getting close to the bottom of a page, ask yourself if you want to tie up the letter. Because if you feel like you don't have a lot more to say, Try to finish at the bottom of the page. Try to bring your thoughts together and have your closing line at the bottom of the page. If you start another page, try to fill that page entirely so that you close at the bottom of the second or third or fourth page. It just eliminates blank space on a piece of paper, which um, is not the best way to do this. But whatever. Though that I'm being picky. You don't have to worry about that now. I want you to uh, have a look at this piece of paper, and I'm going to walk you through how I do this. I want to stress that you shouldn't be intimidated by the lack of fancy script. Even if you write in chicken scratch, that is special, because that is you. That's a sign of you. and. Even if it's embarrassing, if you write a letter in your little chicken scratch and send that off to somebody, they are going to be very touched by the fact that you took the time to sit down and quietly think about them and, and actually put pen to paper. So I don't want you to see my handwriting and think, oh, I could never do that and I'm not going to write a letter. Please, please, please don't feel that way. I do want all of you to at least try this. There is something very fulfilling and very therapeutic about letter writing. It's an art that I would really like to revive. And if I could contribute to some kind of movement that brings it back, uh, the way knitting was brought back by movie stars, um, then I'm going to try. OK, here we go. So I'm using this uh, calligraphy nib in a pen holder that was made for me by my friend. But listen, I also sometimes write with just plain old ballpoints. So whatever you like to write with. I start with the date in the upper right hand corner. The date in the top right hand corner. And then the location, where we are. We are in New York City. And now, I'm going to 
write Dear Anna. And as I said, think about who you're writing to. If, if your relationship with this person isn't very formal, or if you don't want to write Dear, start with their name, Anna, comma. Um, as I said, uh, pretend like that person is sitting at the table with you and just start a conversation. And you can start anywhere. You can start with what you had for lunch. You could start with when I woke up this morning. You can start with last week I thought of you because. That is the springboard for the letter. So, dear Anna, I am going to start with describing the book that I'm reading because I thought of Anna because of the, the book that I was reading. Okay. Now I'm not going to make you sit here while I write the whole letter. So you write the body of the letter and then when you are reaching the bottom of the page if you want to sum up your thoughts um, to end the letter then as I said try to try to decide whether or not you're going to finish on that page by the middle of the page so that you can fluidly bring your thoughts to a close, and then write sincerely, or yours truly, or just sign your name at the bottom. Uh, that's all. I would write to Anna, miss you, lots. Rajiv. So, once your letter is written, you're going to let that dry. I have to let that dry. And then I should show you, for those of you that might not know, how to address an envelope. I don't want to use those envelopes. Envelope addressing. Some of you don't know how to do this. That's okay. That's what I'm here for. Envelope. Flap. Make sure the flap's this way and not this way. And sometimes I don't pay attention and I just pull the envelope out and address it and then realize, uh-oh, it's upside down. So. Right side up. I'm going to put down some lines with a ruler and a pencil. Put some lines in the top left corner because that's where the return address is going to go. You can put the return address on the front of the envelope, but you can also put the return address on the envelope flap. That's also okay. And before I actually write the address down, I usually 
put the stamp on the envelope so I know how much room is going to take up, be taken up by the postage stamp. This is my, this is my collection of postage stamps. So whenever I go to the post office, I always ask them if they have any special stamps uh, that have been issued and I just add them to this envelope so that there are, there's always a, an assortment of stamps. Look at these. Sesame Street, World War One, Moon Landing, Wild and Scenic Rivers. Transcontinental Railroad. So, this is another little thing. If you have nice stamps, it's exciting writing a letter. And if you don't like waiting in the line at the post office, that's okay. You can go on the USPS website and all of these stamps are available to be ordered online. They will send them directly to your house. Very, very easy. I encourage everyone to have a nice little stock of stamps, just a few, just so that if you're ever struck with the inspiration to write a letter, uh, you have a stamp. So I'm going to put a stamp on the envelope. The stamp goes in the upper right hand corner, like this. If it's an international stamp, if it's going overseas, then you need a special international stamp or you need to put on at least three of these forever stamps. And now I'm gonna write the address. on the next line. City, Brooklyn, and then the state, state of New York, and then the zip code. And then we do our return address over here. So, I have my envelope written. Now, uh, put your, fold your letter. It's just for demonstration purposes only. Seal the envelope. And put it in a mailbox. That's all. Now, I hope that this little video has inspired all of you to actually do this, to actually think of someone you care about, to sit down quietly and put your thoughts onto a piece of paper with a pen and then to send them to your special somebody. I assure you that they will be very moved by the gesture and maybe it can become a routine I do believe it's very therapeutic. Um, and it brightens up someone's day to get a letter in the mail. There you are. I'm Rajiv Surendra. You can check out my uh, work at lettersinink.com. And please peruse the wonderful archive 
on the Morgan Library's website of some very, very fascinating letters. It has been a joy and an honor to speak to you on behalf of the Morgan, and um, hopefully I'll see you again soon, or you'll see me again soon. <laughs>